Welcome back, everyone, for the final session of the day. It's been a great day of learning and sharing. We had a great session on registration, tips and tricks, and a great session on Pocket Ledger. And so I hope you've had a good day, and I want to remind everybody that these sessions are being recorded, and Lindsay and I are getting the recordings up as quickly as we can to the virtual site. All you have to do is go to the session that you're wanting to view and click on that, and we'll replace the registration link with the view the video link like you're seeing the view the recording like you're seeing on the screen here the topic for now is on course packaging it's a very popular optional module that provides you an abundance of ways to sell your courses and we hear that jonathan is the best at that jonathan we i want to introduce you come on up and we'll say hello to you the first thing you need to do know about Mr. Jonathan is that it's his birthday. And Yay. so we want to wish him a very happy birthday if I can get that screen up. Go ahead, Chuck, you sing because singing for me would be no gift at all. <laughs> but you're going to get Jonathan, so we'll let the music carry on. Thanks for sharing yeah. your yeah. day with us. You know, there's and better than sp spending your birthday with 134 other continuing educators, I don't think. But we've been trying to get no, you to I share for quite some time. We've been trying to get you to share yeah. how you do course packaging. And I've not been successful, but this was the year. Um, he's worked with Student Manager for 13 years, I believe, and became the Registration mm -hmm. Manager about three years ago. Is that correct? That's correct. Right That's correct. And I understand that when you're not um, developing programs and learning about the software, we could maybe catch you at some concerts or a Broadway show. I'm sure you'll be glad when you can have those opportunities to do that again. Yeah, yeah. I was going to go in December, but now that's not going to be far enough in advance. So um, we'll see. We'll see. Well, Probably sometime maybe later next year, but who knows. I'll be glad when you can do that again. Before I turn things over to you, I'm going to let everybody know that the giveaway this session is an Amazon gift card. Each of you that are in attendance will be in the drawing for that, and Susan will draw while Jonathan presents. And Jonathan, I'm going to turn things over to you, and I'm going to go off camera so that you can tell us how you are using um, course packaging in your program. So you should see controls coming your way now, and I'll let you know mm -hmm. when we see your screen. Okay. Is it coming up now? Um, we just have your webcam. Your webcam now. There, there we are. Okay. We see there you now. Is. Yeah, it took it took it a minute. It took I'm going to go in and cut off the webcam to save some bandwidth. All right. Because it's in your hands. It's an Thanks, kind of thing. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, this is a little bit of a new experience for me because this is my first time presenting at an ACEWAR conference and sort of my first time presenting to a conference in general. So hopefully I won't mess this up too much. Um, at least it's on a subject that I know a little bit about. Um, and of course you've, you've got my introduction. Uh, so as you can see, this is on course packaging. I subtitled it the whole package because it can do a lot of things that are really useful. Um, let me actually click into the screen so it'll let me move. Um, one of the key things that it's going to allow you to do is to group classes together as a series or package to allow for a deal or to make it easier to register. Now, the best part is it works both on the back end and in ACE, Ace Web, as it will should. Um, and it allows for the money to be handled in one of two different ways. And um, it allows each child course, which I'll explain in a second, to also be available separately, which is one of the great parts about it is you're not locked into the package. You can still have all of the individual pieces available individually. It just allows you to package it all into one thing, which is one of the things we really like about it is to have that flexibility. Um, in terms of the options, um, package course is always called the parent course, and the group of classes um, are each a child of that course. Now, under package one, which is what we use for most of our situations, uh, I like to call that that the parent holds the money. 
So that's best for most situations as it keeps um, makes keeping track of the money easier for those registered in the full series. Um, it also acts as a regular course. So it actually keeps track of how many people are registered for that um, class. So you can actually see a uh, running total of how many registered for the series uh, without having to run any other reports. So it's really a, a good way to do that if you want to kind of keep track of how many are signing up um, as the series. And no payments that go through the package are held in the child courses. So all the money lives with the parent that package one course. Now in package two, the child holds the money, which is a little bit of an interesting way of doing things. It, there's certain uses for it. Um, it's best for things that are collaborative series where funds need to be split across different departments. Because as you know, in each course, you can only more or less have one um, account or fund that you're depositing money into. So if it's kind of a cross collaboration and it's a series, it might be better to do uh, package two. Um, and it's also a little simpler for series with a limited number of courses. And the parent in this case holds no registrations or money. So it makes it a little harder to track the number of people that are registered in um, the package itself. Um, but you know, overall there, you know, there are good reasons as to why you would want to do that. And I'm gonna kind of give you the example as one that we, we did actually do that way. Almost as an experiment, because we probably could have done it the other way, but um, I'm gonna show you one. I wanted to make sure I had one to sh show you. Uh, so this is my first example. This is the Ali Met Opera uh, series, and this is set up as a, a package one. Um, this is the registration page for it uh, for the current year. Um, uh, Jonathan? Which I'm, oh, yes. Okay. Well, are you flipping to lie? Oh, you're just now moving. We just saw your screen change. You were starting to talk about uh, the series. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. I, I understand there's a lot of lag. That's why I went there on and cut off go. the- There you go. Yeah. Now, the, uh, now we see the web. Now we see the web. Yeah. Cut off the webcam to save on the lags. I knew there was a little bit there. Um, so this was the page uh, for our opera series. Unfortunately, uh, with the pandemic, it had to be cut short um, about right here, a day before that was supposed to happen. Uh, they said, we're not having any more performances anymore. And of course, the last two uh, got canceled as well. And now my mouse is disappeared. Oh, there it goes. Um, so this was our package. Um, what's nice about it is you can see that there are 10 different operas within that. Um, we price each of these operas at a price of $20 each, which would be $200 if you're buying them individually and paid for an OSHA membership because this is part of our OSHA Lifelong Learning Institute. Now, one of the things that we're trying to do and one of the things we noticed uh, with the series is that a lot of the people that participate in this, this is their favorite thing. This is the one thing that they do. And so we wanted to try to drive membership because we also offer it as a non-member um, for $24 um, a ticket. So we wanted to create a deal that we get people memberships and get people to sign up for the whole series. Um, so you'll notice down here, um, it shows a cost of 170. Now that's the actual cost that went into Aceware for this course, but you'll see over here, um, and I'm assuming you're actually seeing my uh, mouse move around. Um, I guess so. Um, yes. But it's yes. two hundred twenty dollars. Yeah, good. Can I, see it. I thought so. Yeah, you see that it says two hundred twenty dollars includes all ten operas, a wine and cheese reception, and a kickoff uh, to kick off the season, and a one year Ollie membership. Now the one year Ollie membership is fifty dollars. So add one seventy and fifty, uh, you get two hundred twenty dollars. Now we chose not to put that as a part of the series, which we could have done um as a package too uh because some people sign up for their memberships separately they sign up for them early rather than make it a part of the package we decided to just make it a separate piece but we did make it a required um a membership because you can have a membership requisite for a class so this one has a membership requisite specifically for the one year um Ollie membership now we're going to switch over now into the student manager view. And this is uh, the view for that. Um, uh, one of the things that you have to do 
Uh, you're going to do a package one that you have to treat it like it's any other course because it really is. It's going to track all of the information. It's going to keep track of money. So you need to set it up as if it's an actual course, even though all the other courses are going to go along with it. It needs to have all the information in it. So you can see that it has uh, the begin date and end date, the number of sessions um, that are going to be on it. And uh, this course time is a general time uh, for most of the operas. Not all of them are necessarily 1 to 4.30, but that just kind of gives people a general idea of about how long they're going to run. Um, they usually run about, uh, I guess that's two and a half hours. Um, or is it three? I guess let's see, two, three, four, no, three and a half. So three and a half hours. Forget how long they are. Um, but anyway, um, so this, as you can see, you select um, package one. And what that's going to do is that's going to turn where sometimes it would say workshops into package courses over here. Now, what that does is that is where you actually add the child course to this parent course once it's more or less set up. Now, you're going to notice underneath this, um, here are all the child courses. And that you'll notice that underneath here, there is a series fee and the amount is zero. As I said, with package one, parent courses hold all the money. So within the child courses, you're not going to be collecting any um, money um, in those. So um, when you set this up, you want to see that um, as you add um, the courses. Now, when we go to the fee setup for this one, you see you have that 170 that I was talking about. And in addition, we've also set that that requires the same member code as we set um, under our membership restrictions for the course. So it's kind of duplicate that we make sure that, you know, in order to get the fee, you have to have the membership. So we kind of have it in double. Now for, and I just have one of the child courses to kind of show you how that setup works in terms of a child course. As you can see with the child course, we have a lot of options here. Um, this is one of the good things about the course packaging is it doesn't put any restrictions on the child courses in terms of the things you can do with it. Uh, so for the child course, we actually offer a semester membership. Um, you can still get the discount if you have a semester membership, if people aren't signing up for the whole series. Uh, we have a student fee, we have that non-member fee. Um, we have lots of different options in the child course because the packaging isn't making a restriction on that. It's just allowing us to sell it as a package. Uh, one of the good parts about this is that it's actually allowed us to have about half of our normal um, opera programs, which usually have about 200 tickets sold, about half of them uh, come from the um, series. So it's actually been a very successful uh, tool for us in uh, not only making it easier for us to manage the registrations, uh, but also in uh, being able to um, sell you know, sell more of the series. And I think attaching the membership along with that uh, has uh, been helpful. Uh, let's see here. Okay, all right. So um, I'm gonna go on and move on. I think I have, oh, I have um, one thing with this. I was talking about that it makes it relatively easy when you're cloning. So I made a, a fake clone uh, for the fall because I'm not sure exactly when we're going to start with this, if we're actually going to start <laughs> with the fall. Uh, but I basically just created a clone and opened up what the package courses do. And you'll see that um, I put in the coding as I normally would, 21B net 1860. It takes that coding and copies it over. And even the ones that are 21C, it moves that over so that when I create those courses and just clone them to make the component pieces, they'll actually already latch in here uh, once I make them. So it's really easy going from one year to the other. As long as you keep consistent coding, it's gonna just match them up as you go. Very easy uh, to do that from year to year. Every year, you know, the only problem is occasionally uh, one of those that gets coded as B or C is actually, uh, C in this case was actually in December but rather than recode it and mess everything up, I kept it as C just to make my life a little easier. Um, but anyway, uh, that makes it a lot easier to, to move forward um, with one of those once you've already you know, done the setup, the next year gets easier and easier um, or the next time that you wanna offer it. Um, example two here, um, 
is going to be our Kino Financial Accountability Series. And that's also set up as a package one. Um, this one is not as many pieces. Um, it's only a four piece course. Um, and you can see that the total cost on that is 110. Uh, the good part about that is it encourages people to sign up for all of the modules. Um, and we actually uh, do this one a couple of different times uh, throughout the year. Uh, you'll notice it says um, financial accountability, all four modules, Wilmington. Um, our keynote program is our quality enhancement for nonprofit organizations. So they actually serve uh, three uh, main counties, um, New Hanover County, which is where Wilmington is located, um, Onslow County, and then Brunswick County. And so they'll often run this program in all of those different counties. When I go to build another one, I can just use one that was built for a different city, clone it, and all, you know, as long as the coding remains consistent, I can just build another one. So very easy to, you know, to duplicate um, and clone um, in that way. Very similar setup um, that you put in all the information, um, just as you would. Same basic concept, you know, in terms of um, how it gets set up in terms of series fee, you know, that every, you know, we're still in package one, so everything's living um, in the parent course. And as you can see, the enrollments are um, tracking on that particular course. Um, same basic concept on uh, setup for um, the fee for the uh, package class. And then when we go to the component class, um, that we, this one's fairly simple, you know, you either are paying in the series or you're paying individually uh, for uh, the class. Uh, I have another one. Um, uh, this is my third example. Uh, this is our College of Health and Human Services. Um, they have a program called FUSE-CR uh, Fast Track. It's for clinical research. It is an exceptionally large one, kind of like our, um, Met Opera series. As a matter of fact, I couldn't actually fit all of the sessions on one page because there's actually 12 of them. Um, the good part about that is that um, it's you know a fairly expensive program at $600. Um, there's my mouse that always wants to jump around on me. Um, uh, but if they attend at least 10 of the 12 sessions, they get a certificate. So a lot of them, um, even if you know they had already started. Um, if they wanted to go for the certificate, we could just add them to all the sessions. Um, you know, even, even if they joined at say part three here, we could add them on the back end and then they'd be enrolled in the sessions that they miss and enrolled for the rest of the sessions um, if they wanted to seek um, that certificate. So it made it a lot easier uh, to manage uh, that point. Uh, very similar setup. You see that we had, you know, the 15 uh, sign up. Uh, to do it that way with a max of uh, 25. Uh, the first time we actually offered this, um, and this is one of the things that course packaging um, may not necessarily abundantly show, um, is that it only is going to allow you, you'll notice that I've only had one price set up under each of these classes. Uh, by default, there's only one, uh, one price that you can charge for um, a, a package course. So um, when they wanted to offer this after I've set this up for students at a fee of zero, I actually had to set up a separate package course, but because all the child's courses were separate, I could actually set one up that was free. They could sign up for that one. It would sign them up alongside everything else. Um, and they were still able uh, to sign up for that um, without, you know, without being too difficult. And they still were going into the same uh, child courses because they're still independent. Um, so I actually used two package one courses uh, that particular time. Um, this time we decided not to give the students away for free because they filled up the classes. Surprise, surprise. Um, so this one was just for uh, people uh, signing up uh, for the whole thing. And you can see the setup is very similar that you see series fee um, and zero. And then when we get here, uh, we see that the registration fee is $600. Now there is a coupon fee on here uh, but it was a coupon fee that people had to register at least three people. And we kind of did it on the back end to verify that they were actually doing the three people. Uh, so, you know, we, that was more of a back end thing, but it still helped us um, even though they couldn't do it online. 
um, that we were able to register for them, especially with you know the breadth of 12 classes, it made it a lot easier. So you can actually use um, a coupon um, in here. Um, I haven't tried doing it um, through the ACE web uh, before. That hasn't been something that we tried to do because you're already getting somewhat of a discount <laughs> by doing the package. Uh, no one has asked me to do it uh, as a web base. This was based on people signing up more than, I think it was three people from one organization They would get that discount on the whole series. But I was able to do that um, on the back end. And here's uh, one of the session classes and you'll see that the coupon is there as well. Yet again, it needed to be three people from that organization even if they're doing a single class. Uh, so that, um, that amount is down there. Um, and then we still had the student zero fee just in case they decided to let them start registering again. I don't think any of them did, um, but I kept that in there and hit it <laughs> just in case I needed it again. Um, so now uh, we are going to move on to my one experiment with package two um, and to kind of show you what the difference is there in terms of what package two uh, does for you that's a little bit different. Um, first thing, and so um, I have a slide here kind of explaining a couple of reasons why I tried package two for this particular one. Uh, there was a limited overall space um, in each class session because it was a chemistry program. There were only uh, 30 spaces and people were registering individually uh, for the component courses. And uh, that way, because the child courses in this case hold on to all the money, I could you know, run a report and not have you know, an extra course holding part of the money that really need to be divided across two other courses because this was a course that we we're running for um, one of my uh, conference um, youth programs uh, departments rather than one that was internal within my own um, organization. Um, so that was part of my idea. Uh, so here is uh, the page uh, on uh, ACE web. Uh, looks a little different, I guess. I don't have the same uh, template <laughs> for uh, this um, alternate interface, uh, which is our youth programs interface uh, that I do uh, for um, the main uh, registration part of the website, but it still you know, uh, displays the same as you see the, the two courses um, in the package and the total cost there. Now, there's a couple of things here that are really important um, in terms of package two. Remember I said that that course doesn't actually really act like a course, but there are certain things you still have to treat it like a real course for. In order to get that total cost to display, I had to make a fee for the class that never gets charged. Those two uh, $165 fees are the only things that actually get charged, and those are on the child courses. But I still have to create a charge so that people can see what the total cost is going to be. So I kind of have to fill that in even though uh, it's a course that's not going to hold any money. As we can see down here, it never held any money, it never enrolled anybody, but it was used. Um, so that's you know an important distinction that I did have to put that in. And obviously I also put in uh, the date, um, even though in that particular uh, template, it wasn't actually displaying the, uh, the, the, the full dates, but it was there and it was also uh, there, you know, just in case, just to make my life easier since this was sort of an experiment um, in what I could do with package two. Um, and you can see here, uh, very different from the previous package one courses, you see that there is actually a fee when we go to set up the package courses and that that's those 165 fees um, that I showed you a second ago on the ACE web uh, side. And under here is that fee that I made up. And even though nobody is actually being charged that fee, it has to be in there in order for it to have something to display online. So you have to think about that even though the money's not going to go in there, you still have to put that in there um, to get that to display so that people know what their total cost is going to be. Um, so that's a thing um, to think about. And then uh, with the um, one of the child courses, you can see that if they were paying you know, for each, and these were two half-day programs that added up to a full day. Uh, that was the way that they were uh, doing this, that one was for the morning, one was for the afternoon. And if they were doing the full day, they would get a discounted rate of 165 instead of 195. Um, 
They actually also would have a chaperone because uh, normally there'd be a lunch break in between there. Um, so it was actually a really good deal after getting a full day at camp. They could drop them off in the morning and uh, pick them up in the afternoon. So a lot of people you know, actually did uh, take advantage of this. I think about half of the people uh, that signed up for the class um, actually did uh, do it that particular way. All right, um, some benefits and some limitations. Uh, benefits, of course, is the ease of registration uh, for the customer and the registration staff. Um, you will have an increased enrollment um, across uh, the series of classes. And the customers can still enroll in the child courses individually, and it has no impact on the parent course. Also, that allows you to have um, some freedom with the child courses in terms of pricing. If you want to do some other things, some other promotions other than the package, you're still you know, have the freedom uh, to do that, you know, early bird fees, different things, because the package is only going to pay attention uh, to whichever, you know, fee is set up, you know, in, in the setup as a show. Um, as I noted before, uh, you're unable to use multiple fees in the parent course. Uh, so you'll need for additional parent course if you need to have that multiple fee. It's a very rare situation. I only had it that one time and I only had it in that particular case, because they didn't tell me <laughs> before I uh, set it up. So I kind of had to do that, um, but it worked. It worked fine. Um, and it was actually better because then the people that were paying for it didn't see that the students were actually not paying um, anything for it. Um, so that was actually good that it separated it out in, in that fashion. Um, and of course, package two does not track the series enrollment. Now, obviously you can look at, you know, with the way that I had the uh, package to um, child courses set up. Uh, there was a full day, so you could just look at um, a report of you know the types of fees paid, and you would see how many you had uh, for the uh, full day. Uh, but it's not you know immediately obvious on you know sort of a normal um, enrollment report. It just looks at overall um, enrollment, and um, of course you know with um, the cloning, um, you do need to pay attention uh, to. Uh, the course codes um, when you're cloning for the next series, um, you know, make sure as you're setting up for the next time that you might be running something that you uh, pay attention uh, to, you know, if some of those were B's and now they're going to be C's because the schedule isn't completely up to you. Like with the Met Opera, make sure you put in the C where you need to put in the C. Um, I find it easiest that even, you know, since the operas change every year to just kind of reuse the same code. Uh, because it's very rare that an opera will have the same description because there'll be different people playing. So I basically recycle those and, and, and redo the catalog code. Um, you know, there's obviously other options um, if you'd rather you know, not do that. And most of these other ones, I don't have to do that uh, for. That one just happens to constantly change every year uh, with, uh, with a new set of operas and a new set of people conducting and, and starring. Um, and that's kind of uh, the end of what I had uh, planned to show. Uh, so uh, do we have uh, any uh, questions um, about anything that was going over? Uh, Jonathan, you have covered things quite well. Um, one of the questions I was going to ask um, about the module is the BOGO mm -hmm. element. Has uh, UNCW done anything in using that BOGO option? Uh, to promote um, multiple purchases of classes? We don't, I haven't had that as a request um, from yeah, okay. any of my constituents. Um, it just isn't something that they've thought about. Um, right. As you can see, a lot of these are based on, you know, series of things that are, you know, have a structure to them. Um, and so they feel, you know, with, with us doing the packaging, they weren't really offering um, any, you know, kind of buy one, uh, get ones um, in terms of that. I just haven't, it, it's odd that no one has ever mentioned <laughs> wanting to do a buy one, get one. Um, and so I actually have never, in the 13 years I've done it, I've never actually set one up. I think I've looked at it. I may have tried doing it maybe, you know, when we were doing a training one time, uh, but I've never actually had anything that was actually set up. Uh, doing uh, the uh, BOGA. Okay, uh, we do have a question. Miss Brittany, who just got done uh, 
uh, just got done working here. I had a question on a package. Uh, do participants mm -hmm. have to take all of the courses in a package, or can they choose which ones they want? So I'll let you take okay. a shot well, at that. Sure. Uh, these packages are designed so that you take all of uh, those classes. Now, obviously, one of the things that if you look at the math on the, particularly the Met Opera, there's $200 in operas they're getting, there's a $50 membership they're getting, and they're only paying $220. So essentially, they're getting an opera for free in the first place. So one of the things that we found is that I'll ask people, how many of these operas are you, in, you know, intending to attend? And they will generally say, oh, eight or nine. I said, well, if eight or nine, you're really getting benefit um, by doing the, the whole package, even if you don't wind up attending one of them. Uh, one of the things that were very nice uh, to do is if they're not going to make it, uh, we will allow them to kind of, um, we give them a little card um, at the beginning of the season and they can share that card with uh, another person and someone can come in their place you know, out of town that particular week. So it gets us, you know, a good bit of sales um, that way. Uh, but generally in terms of the, the package courses, it's not a, you know, you don't get to, to pick a, a, a selection. Yeah, four, that would be four, four out of six, yeah. Yeah, that would yeah. be more of the, 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 the BOGO option. That would be, you know, where you would want to, to, to go with that. And as I said, we haven't really done it, so I'm not an expert on it. So that's why I didn't include it in, uh, my presentation um, in terms of what we did with course, course packaging. Uh, again, and, and my response uh, to that question about the package, the point of the package is to get the student to enroll in the whole group of classes because you're going to typically list all of those individual classes as standalone classes. If somebody only wanted two of the six or three of the six, then they could go in and buy yeah. a la carte, if you would rather than the yeah. Costco bundle of the, you know, spaghetti right. dinner with the wine and the sauce and the spaghetti all together. Yeah. yeah. Um, and another thing, I'll, um, another thing I'll say is that with the Met Opera, um, a lot of times there will be a particular opera in the season for whatever reason that it's either in English or it's a modern opera that we don't get a whole lot of individual ticket sales for. Um, and we actually have to pay rent on the theater that we use for that. We actually have to pay staff to run that theater. Um, so by doing it as a package, the ones that if we only did individual ticket sales would probably not be profitable. We can kind of spread that out um, across the, the whole series. I mean, literally there's sometimes that there's only 10 people that purchase on top of the people that purchase the series, but because they got it as part of a series, they will go on and come and give that opera a try. And sometimes they'll really um, enjoy it. So it, it kind of works both ways. It gets us a little more people registered, but it also gives people a wider breadth of experience. And, you know, we have a series like that that we don't necessarily have all the control over, but it actually gets, you know, people more engaged. And sometimes they'll have someone completely different come to that one. They'll, you know, if one of their friends isn't, you know, coming, they'll borrow one of those cards and bring someone new. And then that new person will then, you know, come and buy something else. So we actually use that kind of as a marketing opportunity and encourage people to kind of, you know, share and share alike a little bit with that. It gets a little complicated, but, you know, since it's more of an edutainment kind of course, it, you know, we, we kind of play, we use it in a little, you know, beyond just trying to get people signed up for a series. Yeah, very good. Um, I, we had a question about the cost of the module, and I think, Sharon, you confirmed that it is uh, $1,695, um, and that includes BOGO. I'm going to ask, if you don't mind uh, uh, me jumping in, Jonathan, raise your hand sure. if you know that you've got uh, the package module right now. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm just curious, we should have done that earlier. How many folks in here know they have the package module and um, I'm seeing a half a dozen is all and and so again um, uh, if you as Sharon indicated if you don't have the module and you'd like to check it out Matthew or Jonathan has kind of inspired you to try some new things we do offer 
to a 90-day test drive. And so we can set that up for you and be able to um, uh, be able to give you a test drive of that. I do have a question on that, and this is a good one, Jonathan. Christina asked, is there a way to see enrollment numbers in the package certificate and the individual courses that make up the certificate? Uh, currently, you see the enrollments in the individual courses and not the package, and I think that's the package two uh, example. Um, right. Uh, Right. Yeah. With the package two, um, what I would with, with that one, um, uh, you can see it because what I will do is I'll run um, a report that shows me um, because there's two different fees. One was the one that essentially is the package fee that they're paying with package two. Um, you can look at it that way, um, or you could get you know you could make a report where you're seeing a breakdown by all the different you know fees uh, paid. Um, in that particular case, since there were only two classes, um, I have a report that uh, gives me kind of the total amount paid. As I said, that was one that I collect for another department. So I kind of gave them that report. So I was used to giving them that report um, as I was turning over their paperwork because it was a camp every week. Um, mm -hmm. And it broke down how many were uh, doing the full day. And I actually used that so that when I made the name tags, I actually made uh, made sure they knew which, which ones were going to be staying the whole day. Um, I kind of made them a list of here's who's full day, here's who's morning, here's who's um, uh, uh, just the afternoon. Um, so there are there's definitely ways to, to, to get it out there. Um, it's just a matter of uh, pulling a report that can tell you, uh, what, you know, break down by fees paid um, if you want to do that. As I said, package two is an interesting one. Um, Package one works better in most of the cases. Um, and the case that I was using it for was more to kind of see how well it would work in that particular case. It probably would have worked just as well as a, as a package one because I, you know, it, it was not that complicated. Um, that was basically just me trying to make a enrollment form, um, enrollment um, tracking a little easier because then I only had two courses to keep track of instead of three, even though, it, you know, Easily, I could have, you know, pulled out how many were, were doing um, each. I was trying to just reduce the number that I had to, to more or less look at to see how full, you know, they were, even though it was combining them together. Um, the only time I've actually done package two uh, was actually that one uh, set of courses. But as I said, it would be really good if you had kind of a collaborative program where the money is getting split, um, you know. You know, if you're um, like if my nonprofit organization, you know, the, that Kino I was talking about and our continuing professional education, they have separate uh, funding. If one of their, you know, if they were doing a kind of a collaborative series and you need to divide the money up, it would be better if you did package two because then it can use the child courses division to be able to put the money in both places without you having to do a whole lot of extra work. Um, that's right. really, I think, one of the best options for package two. Right. The package two, yeah, good point on that, because within package two, the money goes to the individual class. So split accounts uh, is as possible better with package two. Christina had a follow up question, Jonathan, and maybe you want to jump to <laughs> your uh, uh, manager example. Uh, is that mm -hmm. was that a standard report or did you modify an existing report to get that particular uh, uh, data for your people? Uh, let me see here. Bring manager back up. Yeah, well, those are just actually screenshots, which give me, give me one oh, second okay. now. We'll let you know when you I see can, that. Can, There's a little bit of a lag, so. Yeah, give me just a second, because I'm actually having to run my manager as a remote desktop, because, as I said, I'm my Internet connection, unfortunately, is a smidge slow. So give me just a oh, second. I have one it. of the things while you're digging that out, Jonathan, uh, for mm -hmm. Christina mm -hmm. and anybody else who's looking at that, uh, you mentioned the question about how do you know how many people registered at the package rate when you have a package type two? Um, if you have a package fee description that is unique, which you really need to have, you could run a report of registrations for the package fee equal to quote package fee and that would give you a list of the number of registrations coming in via the package 
uh, for each individual course or globally across the system. So there would be a way using the fee description on the registration fee to do some, um, you know, to do some, you know, how to say deduction, do some inference of how many how many people were buying that uh, that package. I'll let you get back up here. So. Yeah, for some reason that's not wanting to work right now. Let me try it the other way. Um, hopefully this will not disconnect me from the conference, but I'm going to try it just so the same. So far, so good. So far, so good. Well, well, the other way is running a VPN, so it may disconnect me. So if that's you lose good. me, I will try to sign back in quickly. Uh, one of the things, and again, I might mention that um, I honestly haven't played with it, but um, Sharon, if you want to give me the Pelm while Jonathan is getting set up, flip me to the presenter mode, if you wouldn't mind. If folks, if you if you don't mind, um, uh, one of the things that we were talking about about the fee description is that I'm on the preferences in the register table, which is where you would identify what is the package fee that you're going to be assigning to the child classes in a course. So again, you could search by the package fee description and that would give you some ideas on that. Now, the other thing I wanted to reference is BOGO. And probably real quickly, the best way to show is that if you go to our AceWeb sandbox, which is under our AceWeb homepage, under demos, AceWeb portal, and go to examples, we have a BOGO a uh, special offer BOGO example on our AceWeb sandbox. And it basically illustrates, and we need to add more courses, but you basically can identify a group of classes and set up the rules of the buy one, get one. Buy two courses, get the third one free. Buy one course, get the second one half off. Uh, so you're not limited to buy one, get one. You could say buy four, and get the fifth one for 10% off if you wanted to be a piker. Uh, so again, uh, there are ways of doing that, and that, that works best if you have a group of similar courses um, at probably maybe personal interest or enrichment type courses where you might want to encourage en enrollment in several, and um, you don't necessarily have to create a precise package you get vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. That is the package. You can't add pistachio or Rocky Road. You have to pick those three, and that's your bundle. Uh, with BOGO, you could have uh, 37 different flavors, buy five and get the fifth ice cream cone free. So again, that's, that's the BOGO. That comes with the uh, package module. So uh, Jonathan, are you uh, back on your live system here? Um, yeah, I've got, um, I'll let got, Sharon give you uh, the, the give you the control or make you the presenter again. You'll be asked okay. to present one more time. Yep. All right. We are bringing All you right, up. So, you are there. Okay. So we're seeing a student manager screen now, I'm assuming. Not yet. We're looking at a, there you are. Okay. I know that, that ridiculous lag not to mention it's also it's also um, coming remote desktop so here is that live course that I was showing or at least one that's similar I'm not sure this is exactly the same one but they were all set up the same way so I've copied my course code here and I have set up the report that I run as a global favorite and we can see you've got about a you've got about a three or four second delay just in transmission so you'll need to give us a three sure. count to go between screens okay. and we're waiting Fine. there you are now main screen okay so i All went right. to global favorite reports and then i'm showing you where it's coming from uh so the one that i'm using is ceu reporting and detailed fee uh summary does that sound like one that you included with us because so many of these got modified before I ever joined 13 years ago. I think that might be one that you guys made and we may have messed with it just a smidge, but more or less, it's probably fairly similar to the one that's that's in here. Cause I feel like that's one that we, 
I don't feel like that's the name that you've necessarily given it, um, but we may have messed with it a little bit to get it to, to do the right things. All right, so now I've just, you know, as with a global, with, with a favorite, you know, it kind of remembers what I need to do. So now I'm down to filling in the query value, which of course I copied earlier. So now all I have to do is tell it to run that query. And then, yeah, unfortunately this may not display correctly <laughs> and it's not. Um, oh yeah, that's dumb me because I did it on the parent course which doesn't have anything <laughs> in it. That's me, that's me being dumb. Uh, one second, I'll go get <laughs> the child course which is where I was supposed to be looking at. Oh. And uh, once again, yeah, this is, I have a weird quirk with this particular uh, computer. Um, that's why I was trying to originally run it um, at remote desktop through um, Horizon. Because when I run it as a VPN in remote desktop, uh, none of the reports display correctly. Really? Uh, <laughs> it's well, one of those maybe weird things that cuts off the, yeah. Huh. yeah. But it gives me the information that I need. Um, so you can see here, um, uh, still waiting, still waiting. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, so it's cutting off a little on the right, but what we need to see, we can clearly see. Um, I can get it to scroll. It's uh, there we go. Here. So, yeah, so eventually, once it finishes refreshing, you'll see the, the breakdown of um, this particular one. We put it as uh, commuter fee and then full day, and it broke it down as there were 13 that signed up for the full day, five that signed up um, as a commuter. So that's my normal way of, of giving them uh, that uh, breakdown because um, I have that set up as a global favorite. I can run that just about as quick as I can do anything else or just kind of glance and count. Um, the other option of course would be to, you know, just kind of look with, with the smaller list and the student list and kind of count um, you know, if it's a smaller number, uh, but you know, with using the separate fees, it's still easy enough to get that information out. Um, and then obviously if you do an export, then, you know, you could sort by those fees and, and see instantly, okay, these are the ones that are doing full day. These are the ones that are doing a uh, commuter, which is actually what I did for them. Um, I actually gave them more or less a report that was for both of the sessions and then broke it down. Um, so they only had one sheet that covered the whole day versus having to open two different files since they were, you know, basically one half of one day, a half day morning in the in, in afternoon. So I, when I did their export, I actually kind of combined the two camps in the one um, by, by doing this, um, which made it maybe a little easier to keep track of everybody. I don't know. <laughs> I passed it off and, and they ran it and they didn't give me any complaints. So hopefully, that, <laughs> off, hopefully, hopefully that worked well enough for them. Uh, so uh, to answer Christina's question way, way back when, this is a default report under the, um, what was it, class details? Um, uh, so yeah, C it was under CEU and... Um, CEU, class uh, details, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course, um, yeah. Um, I wanted it, to yeah. ask, um, would you um, go ahead and close this report and go to uh, reports courses? There is Matthew added a special report uh, under mm -hmm. um, under course reporting that is a certif a, a course packaging report. So close that and go to reports courses and see if seventy three has that in. Yes, course packaging. Honestly, I haven't played much with those. Jonathan, do you get into that much or not? 
I haven't. I haven't, but we can certainly see what happens as we run have a... one for run one for the uh, one of the mother courses and see if that uh, uh, if yeah. you still got the mother in there. Let's see. Uh, let me see. Or I'm even guessing for that a, might have been 40, with, yeah. Let me see if that was forty nine oh one. It might have been four. Okay, so it wasn't forty nine oh one. Because I think uh, the course packaging. Uh, does some of that uh, reconsolidation, if you would, of those package type twos? Um, mm -hmm. I don't have yeah. Matthew here to ask um, uh, right off the top, but we can confirm. Mm -hmm. Now that wasn't uh, that wasn't the one. Um, yeah, here's one. I'll grab it right now. Yeah, it's forty nine oh five for some weird reason. All right. So let's let's so try I'll running run that, that with your course packaging. But but that I believe was an attempt to try to reconstitute, uh, you know, offer some ways to reconstitute um, uh, these packages on the reporting side. So again, if you've got course packaging and you haven't played with that, I certainly encourage you to get into that uh, um, course packaging reporting and and begin to play with that. There may be more. Yeah, it seems like Go ahead. Yeah, it seems like there might be something. Well, I'm getting a, an error for some reason. Oh, so the uh, report, there's a corruption in the report. So um, I'll uh, I'll send you that. And again, folks with packaging, if you find that you've got a bad report, give um, um, give your tech a call. Uh, shoot us a note. Shoot me a note, Chuck at Aceware, and uh, we'll send you a updated report for that area. So. Sharon, we've I think we're we're getting close to our witching hour here. Do you any close up things or questions that you're seeing that you need to cover? Whoop, can't nope. hear you. I'm not I have to put audio on if if you're wanting to hear me, but good session, lots of good discussions. Jonathan, we really thank you for joining us today and sharing those experiences and answering all the questions and so um it's a good job. I'm just sharing tomorrow's agenda. There you see now it's a little change in schedule because at noon we'll have an open forum. And so that's a time to kind of sit around, envision a roundtable discussion with a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage to throw out your questions because if you have them, there's other people that do too. We have a few that have been asked already that we'll address tomorrow. So here's what's on the schedule for tomorrow, and I need to give a shout out, almost forgot, to Terra State Community College's Holly Hoffman. You have a Amazon gift card coming your way. You'll hear from Susan here shortly. So with that, unless there's any other things, we'll let you get on with your evening, and we hope to see you tomorrow morning at 1030 Central Time for Student Manager email templates. And then in the afternoon, we'll follow that. Lindsay will be sharing AceWeb email templates. And in there, we have somebody from the University of Texas, El Paso, talking about coding. So until sure, then, sure. yep. yep. I, I was going to say, Jonathan John. said this was his virgin uh, voyage <laughs> as a presenter. <laughs> and besides being a birthday boy, I think his uh, first effort was outstanding. And we're getting that I think from, so. your, from your team. Uh, so, <laughs> Jonathan, excellent job. Enjoy the rest of your birthday. And we, yep, we will have him back. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Jonathan.